so in this video we will be seeing how to bypass the mc so mc stands for uh, anti malware scan interface so this is the dll and in this dll we will have these functions i opened this dll in the pe bear and here you can see in the export section you can see all of these functions and one important function is mc scan buffer so what this function does is it will scan the input for any malicious strings if there are any malicious strings then this gonna block it this mc will uh, be working with the windows defender and this uh, uh, you can see this uh, function uh, results will be uh, evaluated by the defender uh, not only defender if you have any other antivirus so that antivirus can also work with this uh, mc dll so if the windows defender is on and if i type invoke uh, mimi catch then you can see this script contains malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus software that is defender so uh, what we are going to do is in this video uh, we will be patching this mc scan buffer so we will make this function return true so that the windows defender continues uh, uh, will not detect the string as a malicious one and you can also use some obfuscation techniques like mc.file so here if i type invoke mimic catch and this windows defender is uh, updated and here you can see uh, And here you can see these uh, obfuscations are also getting detected by the latest windows defender so we are going to patch this uh, uh, patch this mc scan buffer function so whenever this dll uh, loaded so dll is loaded in this powershell and we need to find the base address and if you uh, find the base address of the dll residing in that process we can calculate the function at this uh, you can calculate the exports and you can find the function uh, in the dll and you can just modify with the return uh, value one so in this video we will be walking through the code i have written uh, uh, it took me like one day so let's get started it is uh, somewhat uh, lengthy code and you can if you have watched my previous videos so like parsing exports and parsing pe file then it should be uh, a good uh, if you did not watch i highly recommend watching those videos so the file uh, so this program takes arguments one is process id and the dll name and the function name you want to patch so after that we are going to retrieve the dll uh, base address uh, using this create to help 32 snapshot so it will take the snapshot of the uh, process at that current time and you will, will be enumerating uh, the first module and then uh, we'll be using this uh, module 32 next to enumerate the modules and if the real name is equals to the one we have given in the uh, command line argument then we are going to say found in modules uh, that is the full path of the DRL and the DRL base address and the size of DRL image so the size of DRL image is size of uh, image from the uh, optional header and then we got the base address so we know where the DRL is going on and uh, uh, there onwards you can start parsing this PE file and you can see open process uh, this is all access so you can uh, filter the access permissions uh, like read write query information etc so for the demonstration purposes let's give this uh, full access and pass in the process id so we got the uh, handed to that process and we have the dll base address so we can read out memory uh, you can read out the a memory from that address like if you read starting 64 bytes 
uh, that is going to be the dash stub you can see the dash stub here and this uh, this is a revenue if you go to this offset you will go to the uh, this pe header the nt header starting so like that you can read the process uh, memory using the read process memory so read process memory the process to hand it to the process and the data remote base address and you create a new byte array that is the size of image dash header so the dash header is the starting one and we are going to read the 64 bytes from that process memory into this uh, buffer byte uh, byte buffer dash and we are going to use the function called bytes to structure so this is a generic type so it will uh, So what we are just doing is we are allocating uh, some memory in our own process space of these bytes and then we are going to converting that structure uh, pointer into the structure. So uh, whatever memory residing at that whatever uh, data residing at that pointer will be converted into structure of the T. So the T is the dynamic type if you pass uh, image dash header at this it will convert into image dash header if you pass uh, NT header it will convert into NT header. So that is the advantage of uh, generics. Uh, we can uh, get the dynamic uh, uh, return type. And in the same way, we are going to process the next two four bytes. That is uh, signature. So DLL remote base press E L F N U. So if I go to this one, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, F zero. So if I go to F zero, so this you can see if. You, uh, uh, for uh, 5045 that is that stands for PE and then you can uh, you can go and pass you can write these uh, checks if that is if this is not a PE file then you can return that uh, this is not a PE file so uh, next one is we are going to pass this uh, file header that is uh, 20 bytes I guess and same and the offset will be changing dash header lfnu plus 4 so this plus 4 is signature and then we will get the uh, file header and the next one is we are going to pass the optional header so this one optional header and in this optional header if you look at the export directory address and here you can see e40 so at this offset from the base address you will have this uh, image export directory uh, image export uh, descriptor i guess so here you can see uh, this is the export so here you can see now we got the optional header and we are going to uh, export this one into uh, image export directory so if you go to the So these are the characteristics and this is the name mc.dll you can see here if you go to this address uh, so you can go to the offset you can see the uh, mc.dll so go to e56a uh, now you can see the uh, string mc.dll so that is at the offset this one So I have written another function that is read process memory string. So what this do, what this does is uh, if you give the so if you give a base address so if I give this address of this a then it will start reading byte by byte until it uh, faces the null byte. If it faces the if it read the null byte then that means the string has been terminated. So it will read the A and then M S I dot DLL and if it faces the uh, null byte then it will return. So we are just uh, this is a very convenient process uh, to read the string from the remote process. So you can see if uh, I have also set this limit to 50 because uh, I think no more uh, not only uh, the function name cannot be more than 50 uh, it can be more than 50 but in normal it's just the limit so we are reading byte by byte and if it's comparing with the zero then we are 
getting that full string and returning that string so that is uh, this function does for the remote process if it's in the local process uh, we can use the marshall uh, dot uh, uh, pointer to string and c so and we are parsing the exports now our exports uh, structure contains all of this information now we are going to read uh, the exports.name so you can just uh, read process memory string at that uh, uh, exports.name offset now we are going to uh, parse these exports so this uh, this is the number of functions d and number of names d so that means there are no other functions that are exported by ordinal uh, only so if i go to address of names if i go to this offset and here uh, you can see these uh, values uh, if you uh, parse these four bytes uh, you will get the value e573 so if i go to uh, e573 i will get actually uh, i will get the name mc cross session and if i go to the next four bytes that is e584 i will get the next function that is mc initialize so like that we are going to loop over this one so this uh, we can call this one as the name pointer so this one uh, is called uh, uh, export address table and this one is called export name table and this one is called export ordinal table so i have created three pointers which are just adding the base address plus this value uh, base address plus this value and the base address plus this value so these are the three pointers ENT pointer, EAT pointer and EOT pointer. Now we can just print out these uh, addresses. Now what we are going to do is we are going to loop over all these names and we are going to find out which function we have given in the command line argument. So we are going to read process memory ENT pointer plus I into 4. So I into 4 is the looping. So we want to loop uh, 4 bytes each time and we are converting this into the uh string see here you can see uh, we are using again this read process memory string and then onwards uh, we are going to uh, so uh, if i found uh, this one uh, you can see uh, if i want to find the address of this function mc cross session uh, so this is the first element right so this is the first element and you see the first element in the address of name ordinals that is 0 0 so you go to that index in this address of functions so you, here the value is 0 uh, word 2 bytes and if you go to the 0 at this uh, uh, this address of functions and here you can see 2520 is actual address of that function so here you can see that is being parsed by the PE bear So it's same, the same applies to the MC scan buffer. So the MC scan buffer is the fourth element in this address of names. And if you look at the fourth element in the address of name ordinals, one, two, three, and four. So the third one. So zero three index. So if you go to the address of functions, zero, one, two and 3 so it will be uh, 2540 so 2540 so here you can see 2540 so this will be the uh, address of that function so that is what we are going to parse here read process memory EOT pointer so we are will be here stepping 2 because uh, the index takes only the uh, two bytes word and then we are reading the process memory at that location at that index you can see current EOT into four at that index and we will get the uh, address in this address uh, byte array and then we are going to uh, write the uh, this opcode so this is actually move rx comma one and return
so you can uh, so move rx comma one return so uh, what this does is the function uh, in assembly will take the uh, uh, eax and rx registers as the uh, function return value if the function returns one then uh, the defender will not uh, will think that uh, there are no malicious strings so click on assemble and you can copy this array so that is uh, the same array and then we are writing uh, at that function so we got the function address that is 2450 and we are going to overwrite these bytes uh, we are also changing the virtual product so that uh, we can uh, read write and finally we are writing those uh, bytes into that uh, function and after that we are reading uh, at that uh, function address to verify if our payload is successfully written or not so that is what we are doing so so the function bytes can be uh, like this so assume these are the function bytes so we are uh, just uh, replacing some of the bytes with move uh, rx comma 1 and return so whenever this function gets executed uh, it will r one will be copied into rx register and it will directly return so these bytes are just uh, like uh, empty ones that does nothing so you can also assume uh, like this one so here you can see if the arguments the length is not equal to 3 i am directly exiting so you can compare that uh, to this one so all right so let's go and so let's invoke mimic edge and it's not uh, it is getting directed by defender So PID, the process ID. And the DLL name, amc.dll and amc scan buffer. Now we are going to hit enter and here you can see the found in modules amc.dll and the base address is this one. And size the DLL image, export address table export name table and ordinance table and the function contains index 3 so we uh, just like we have parsed from PEB manually or writing at this one and with the payload so this is the uh, move rx comma 1 writ written and after all written we have read from that function address and we got the same bytes so that means our function has been patched now if i go and invoke mimic edge and here we can see we can successfully uh, uh, fool this defender to think that this is not a malicious string. So that's how uh, you bypass this AMC by patching the function in memory.